Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Dojo Live. Today is Wednesday, October 20th, 2021. I'm Tulio Sergusa, broadcasting from Southern California. Joining me today are Carlos Ponce in Cuernavaca, Mexico, and Kim Lantis in Hermosillo, Mexico. Welcome back, guys. Hello. Good to be here at Saturday, Tulio. And our guest is Julia Slanina, who's the CEO and founder at Treehouse Medical. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Please so be here. So you're in Ottawa, Canada, correct? Yes, I am. We have the... all of North America represented right here. That's right. Coast very America. good. <laughs> the whole North American continent. Awesome. So today we're talking about Femtech. Mm -hmm. And we're excited to have this conversation with you. And uh, before we get to the topic at hand today, before we dig into that and see what we can unpack and learn, let's get to know you a little bit. Uh, Julia, would you please introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. So my name is Julia Slanina. I'm the founder and CEO of Treehouse Medical. Um, I, uh, I started Treehouse Medical um, about two years ago now. Um, I started it as really a passion project and it stemmed um, from kind of the circumstances that happened in my life. Um, by, by trading, I was a foreign service officer. I, I worked in the federal government in Canada as a Canadian diplomat for a number of years when I decided to, to make a career change and I started medical school. Um, I started medical school when my son was a year old. And um, that's when I really started having a real passion for women's health, for uh, children's health, pediatrics, and focusing really on on helping mothers and babies. I had a, a difficult um, postpartum journey. And so um, I realized that there were so many providers that helped me um, to, to help and support me adapting to being a new mom. And so after my first year of medical school, um, I unfortunately um, had a, a, a very awful family tragedy that happened. My mother was diagnosed with terminal cancer and I had to stop my medical degree. Um, and I needed to stay home and be home with my family, take care of my child, and change really everything that happened in my life. It was just a complete um, 180. And so that's when I realized, you know, where are my passions still remained medicine, my passion still remained um, supporting women and families. Um, but I felt that the best way to do that was through technology, because technology um, was something that uh, everyone was using and every mom was on every device. And so um, that's essentially kind of why I started Treehouse. But um, it, it happened through kind of some bittersweet situations in my life. And, um, and it led me to, to grow a company uh, and to build something that uh, is a need. Well, thank you for sharing your story. What an amazing story from public service back to public service so interesting <laughs> yeah, journey I know. it's an amazing journey and, and, right and, and you're, really still, you're still doing a public service yeah so yeah it's brilliant uh let's let's talk about uh, we're very sorry for your loss as well uh, mm, thank you. it's a very difficult thing to go through uh tell, tell us about treehouse you mentioned it what gave birth to this idea i've got a little bit of a taste of yeah. that but if you could break that down for us and uh, tell us what you do, what the company does, that'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. So Treehouse Medical is a digital um, innovation that is very specific to, to building an innovative platform for the maternal health community. So it's a software solution that is there to support allied health providers that support families from conception to those early years. It allows those providers to connect with their clients, to stay connected with their clients, to grow their business and offer better care. So it is a B2B SaaS, business to business SaaS platform um, that's very much focused on supporting those allied health providers in order to provide better care for their clients um, and, and to, to, to support it at the end of the day, that mom and baby. Okay, so dumb question for understanding. What is an allied health provider? What does that mean? Yeah, yeah allied health. Question. I had the same question. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, it, it depends, I guess, on the region where you're from sometimes. Some people call them allied health um, supports. Sometimes they call them um, non-medical providers. So when you get pregnant, traditionally... Like a doula, um, for example. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So when you get pregnant, traditionally, you might think, well, of course, I need a family physician or a primary care 
care uh, physician or uh, an obstetrician, an OBGYN. Um, but the reality is, is that those people are critical to the care that you may need, but there's so many other providers and those are in that allied sphere. And those um, providers are doulas, lactation consultants, um, all sorts of different types of providers, pelvic floor physiotherapists, speech language pathologists. These are all providers that help and support uh, women or families and children or infants um, from the time that you're thinking of conceiving to the time that maybe you're thinking about going back to work uh, or your child starts school. So these are individuals that are non-medic and not, not to say that they're not medical, but they are not medical doctors, um, but they still support care um, in that sphere. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. I was always wondering who, who takes care of all those alternative medicine providers. Now we know. So uh, now we know. Yeah. Let's go right into the topic. Uh, I think, Kim, would you please uh, introduce the topic today? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Tulio. Thank you, Julia, for being here. The topic, the tagline that you chose today is mm -hmm. nurturing the maternal care industry together through technology. I wanted yeah. to say I thought it's very smart. Um, you mentioned mothers always being on devices, and it's that that me moment where I have to confess that I have at least once dropped my cell phone on my baby's head. <laughs> yeah, like oh so. God. Yeah, I don't think I'm alone in that. I've seen memes <laughs> on Facebook, cartoons, and such. So yeah, it's really smart to connect in this way, right? That we all have these devices that we live by. Um, mm -hmm. But beyond that, why did you choose this particular topic today? Nurturing maternal care industry together through technology. Yeah. Well, because it really is, it's not just the mom that's using that device. And I think that's where a lot of people, their mind will go directly to that. They'll think, oh, well, this is a consumer driven uh, technology. This is really only about the moms. But the reality is, is that behind the moms are those care providers. And if those care providers have good tools uh, and they have tools that are really built for their workflows or it's built for the way that they handle care, which is very different than a medical doctor does, then they are able to provide exceptional care or optimal care. And then that translates to the care of the child or the mom. And so I chose this topic because we're, you know, we're in a space where sometimes these providers, unfortunately, kind of get pushed under the rug, and they don't, they don't get spoken about. And I think it's very critical that we we bring that to light. One of my experiences after my first year of medical school, I was shadowing a doctor. Um, and we had a, a mom that was in the exam room, we walked in and she was suffering from some breastfeeding issues. And um, she was obviously, you know, overwhelmed and uh, distressed. And uh, I walked out of that room with the doctor for a minute. And he said to me, you know, Julia, I don't know any lactation consultants. And I certainly am not trained in lactation. So just Google the first lactation consultant you find on your cell phone and go and tell the mom that. Mm -hmm. That's not care. Mm -hmm. That is not the way that you should be providing care. There should be a platform, uh, especially here in Canada, we don't have that, um, a platform where vetted, um, trusted uh, providers that support all these moms and, and support doctors and support the medical community can go and find that uh, that care. And so I think it's very important for us to, to bring that to light uh, and to, to talk about the fact that there isn't just um, a mom and a doctor always involved. That's a that's a 1% situation. There's so many other people that are involved in the care and nurturing of, um, of, a, of an individual. That's, that's really great. So does Treehouse work in the sense of allowing you to easily access the provider that you're looking for in your area? Does it have like a rating and similar to what you might find on like Amazon or Expedia or how, how does that work? Yeah, so great question. Um, so at the moment, we're very much focused on really delivering value to those providers first, because if the providers have the tools, they are able to provide that better care. And so the way that it works is that we work with providers. So we work with doula agencies or lactation specialist clinics, and we give them a platform to be able to connect with their with their existing clients. But on that particular platform as well, they're able to also showcase their services and their skills. So if I'm, for example, a doula that is in Toronto, this is a major city, um, then um, maybe there's a mom in Northern Ontario that just doesn't have access to doulas because of just the sheer 
uh, fact that she's in a remote area or in a in a less urban area, she can come to the Treehouse Medical platform, find a vetted provider, and if that provider um, is with offering you know, virtual supports, she'll be able to connect with them. So we bridge that gap for individuals. So it not only supports the providers with their existing clients, but then it also allows the providers to grow their business, get more clients, and then in turn, those moms that are looking for care, they can find it. Julia, I'm curious about uh, what steps are you taking a tree what is treehouse taking towards telemedicine if any because uh if i'm understanding correctly then it seems like you're connecting providers and and, mm -hmm. uh, and patients so are you taking any steps towards telemedicine or offering telemedicine services or mm -hmm. or, or options for, you know, at treehouse absolutely so our solution our software uh has a uh embedded video conferencing system that is medical grade um it is not um just a, a regular standard video conferencing system uh it is one that is used um by uh telemedicine networks here across canada uh and trusted within the hospital networks here so um when you use our solution you are able to actually have one-to-one -one or one-to-many conferencing solutions um, and in, in a way that is HIPAA compliant um, and compliant for, for your uh, personal health information. Okay, I see. Thank you so much, uh, Julia. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So so the platform allows for that connection to take That's place right. for nurturing the relationship. Does it also work as a marketplace where I can find a, a doula or a hypnobirthing expert? Yeah. I, I remember how difficult it was because you have to rely on people that can make recommendation. And sometimes just people don't know, right? They, they use traditional methods. They don't have access to these kinds of alternative medicine treatments. But they're out there. And, you know, yeah. Googling people, it's like, uh, good luck, right? So yeah. does it also work as a marketplace? And, yeah. and how do you recommend someone versus another one? How does that work? Mm -hmm. So that's definitely something that we're growing right now in our pipeline. Um, we just launched on September 15th. So we have a lot of moving parts from a tech roadmap. So we're really fresh on the market. Um, we've been really alive, really thriving for general release for about a month and a week, uh, or a month and five days, really. Um, so it is definitely on on that pipeline roadmap that we have. Um, over the last month or so, we've onboarded a number of providers. And so our next kind of marketing strategy is really to focus on uh, introducing parents to that uh, to that platform in order for them to be able to make that connection and, and find that care. So it is definitely something that we're working towards um, within this quarter and then as we move into 2022. Now, we know right. that that community is very supportive of each other. Is yeah. this, how are you planning to, uh, let's say, leverage that? Are you, in terms of marketing the platform, are you focusing in Canada regionally or are you expanding North America? What's your thought process around? marketing this in those communities mm -hmm. so yes you're you're very correct to to make that assumption that it is a very connected community of course when you're going through pregnancy when you're going through postpartum um, you tend to share very emotional and vulnerable moments and so we recognize that and we recognize the fact that um, it has to be in, in an intuitive way where people feel safe number one but they also feel nurtured um, and so we are focused predominantly now on Canada specifically um, and throughout kind of probably most likely the the good part of 2022 we are already um opening up kind of a u.s strategy uh for the the following year um but just because we launched in q4 of 2021 um we're focusing on really getting a strong hold in the canadian market first um and then expanding um throughout north america i wanted to talk about or ask you rather about the market itself it seems to mm -hmm. me that there's this uptick in the you know, non-traditional allied alternative medicines and treatments and approaches, at whatever the names are that we want to add to it. Sure. Things yeah. like doula, like or um, you know, homeopathy elements. Like, why? What do you, is that true that there is this uptick? And if so, what do you think is motivating it? Like, what's behind this growing market in the first place? Yeah, um, I think it's really important to note that you know, eighty percent of purchasing decisions. Um, take place by women. Um, women make 80% of decisions and women spend more 
on healthcare uh, than men in various phases of their lives. Um, so whether that is um, when they're going through puberty, whether that is when they're making a significant life change, whether that means when they're, you know, getting married or when they're having a child or in different other phases in their life when they're going into menopause. Um, but birth that's control. birth control. Exactly. So I think that's a really important reminder. We also know that, you know, 49% of the global population is female. And so for so many years, technology has really not focused on what that woman's needs may be. Um, I think it's really important to, to shed light on the fact that increased awareness, um, early self-detection, and better care and better management of that care have increased to a better and a greater demand for technology and options um, for women at those different phases of life. What we know in femtech specifically, and this is really care again from really birth till death and the various stages of that in healthcare specifically, is that femtech is, a, is an industry that is expected to exceed $60 billion within the next 10 years. Um, so it is an, uh, it's really we're on that kind of trajectory um, and, and we want to be part of that. Are there markets that are more open to this than others? I know, for example, here in the U.S., California is extraordinarily progressive when it comes to alternative medicine versus perhaps some other states that are still tied into more traditional approaches to healthcare. Mm -hmm. uh, what's it like in Canada? Is is there more support for these allied or alternative medicine providers? Uh, I know here it's been a challenge for many of them getting recognized. They're not always recognized by the FDA, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah. how's that? You know, what's the contrast yeah. like in terms of your journey? learning where the market lies that has the greatest opportunity. Absolutely. So of course, we know the the US market is significantly larger than the Canadian one. But we do also recognize is that because we have a public health system here, um, uh, is that there are a lot of providers that need to have uh, the ability to support these parents a little bit better. Um, a lot of them are fee for service. And so finding ways to become more accessible is something that they want. There's a huge need. And I think the fact that it, it stems also from a kind of the way that um, countries really see uh, care and how they see maternity care and the way that they see care of the woman after she gives birth. So in North America, unfortunately, we have deplorable statistics. You know, Canada is uh, ranked 30th out of 36 OECD member countries when it comes to infant mortality. The United States is even worse. Um, you know, we know that um, three in five um, pregnancy related deaths can be prevented in the United States. Over 700 women die every single year in the United States during childbirth. Um, these are deplorable statistics when we look at a developed country. When we look at other nations in Northern Europe, for example, even in Asia, we just see the way that the culture sees pregnancy and sees postpartum care and maternity care is a little bit different. For example, in France, any woman that gives birth in France is given support by the, the, by the state uh, for a pelvic floor physiotherapist in order to help her, um, you know, bring back the muscles and, and that muscle tone after she's given birth. That is something that in Canada, no one has ever heard of. To be quite honest with you, I never engaged or even knew what a pelvic floor physiotherapist was until I had my own child. Now, that education is really important as a, as a culture and as a nation as well to, to be open to supporting women and mothers uh, when they decide to get pregnant and decide to have a child. Because the way that we see it here at Treehouse and, and is, is that you know, this impacts the economy. Uh, a woman being supported um, and culturally as a nation being supported um, allows that woman to go back to the workplace um, and drive a better workforce and drive a better economy. Um, and so I think that is really critical. And we see that it's been proven in other places around the world, throughout Europe, throughout Asia, um, and, 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 and even in other places as well. Amazing. Yeah. <clears throat> Julia, I see that you, you have, uh, okay, you're about prenatal care, you got postnatal care, parenting, but I also see that you cover other areas as well. For example, mental health, uh, nutrition, uh, psychiatry, even physical therapy. So how do you go about uh, 
deciding who to work with uh, in regard as providers it, because it as you expand and grow i mean the, these uh, this i mean from my perspective it could be a little bit uh, how can i say this complicated to decide who to work with so how do you go about deciding who to work with in these areas yeah um so that's a great question um so the way that we look at it is we look at what are those phases that someone would go through and what are those milestones maybe that they're going to be needing support with. So um, at the prenatal stage, how many providers uh, does the average family or woman uh, lean on? Um, and so we kind of look at that. So are there doulas? Are there uh, childbirth educators? Who is part of that phase? Then we consult with kind of, we have a group of advisory uh, clients that we consult with. They're, they've been our early adopters that are Treehouse Ambassadors. And we really speak to them a lot about who is it that they lean on. Um, the list is extensive, yes. But the reality is, is that um, these are all the individuals that help and support these, uh, these women at some st stage or the families at some stage. So um, the way that we decide is we have a vetting process. Uh, every provider that comes to our website and wants to be part or use Treehouse Medical will need to be vetted. You need to be accredited or have the uh, credentials associated to your practice, uh, practicing um, body, uh, if it's relevant in that case. And uh, we really just break it down by those phases, whether it's prenatal, postpartum, um, and, and various different, different milestones associated to that. All right. Thank you, uh, Julia. So, uh, Kim, do you, got a, uh, do you have a question? Well, I was just thinking oh. if there's any type of oh, yeah. education. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. Sorry, it seemed like there was a delay. I was wondering if there is or will be maybe an educational component to Treehouse, going back to what you were talking about, like the pelvic floor ther physiotherapy, yeah. I think is what you said. Physiotherapy, um, yeah. <laughs> and just even helping to remove certain stigmas, like, or even just like with prenatal care. For example, my own experience four years ago, my daughter was born at 28 weeks gestation with an emergency mm. C-section because I had preeclampsia. And I had always heard of this word preeclampsia, um, mm -hmm. a significant percentage of women go through it, but was never really worried about it. And then in my case, even after she was born, I didn't get better. It, it, got, it transitioned into something called HELP syndrome, which I didn't even know existed until mm -hmm. I was in an ICU um, looking death straight in the face. So is there an educational component as well? Like, um, or is that coming yeah. to help in that sense? Yeah, so the way that we do it currently, and we're always open uh, to expand this and to grow it, is that we currently uh, do it uh, through our podcast. We have a Tree Bark podcast where we invite guests uh, to talk about relevant topics, whether they be urinary incontinence, which, yeah, is not the most uh, exciting uh, topic <laughs> or, um, you know, sometimes is stigmatized because of the word associated to it. Um, or we talk about um, co-sleeping or we talk about very different elements that um, a provider in that space would be. So the way we do that is, is through our podcast by bringing on those experts and educating um, through an audio um, component. Uh, the other way that we do that is through our community. So the way that um, any individual can access this resources is be it by becoming and creating an account on our on our website. So if you join the community as a provider, or as a parent, you are able to access our growing body of resources. Um, so whether that be a checklist or, or anything that is, is going to help guide you um, on further knowledge. Um, right now, we're, we're very open to, to working with um, experts in that field who can help us grow that knowledge base. Um, and so that's something that uh, is very important because knowledge, um, of course, gives that parent the confidence to make the decision and, and, and have a better health choice. So a uh, question, uh, in terms of education, that is like the beginning of the, the, the battle, if you will, right? Mm -hmm. um, so are you going to create an, an environment where the community can share success stories or experiences with each other and are men welcome to participate in this as well? Because that education also extends to men, I would assume, right? What's Absolutely. The 
Yes, absolutely. So we uh, do not uh, do not. Uh, we're, we're a very diverse company, and we're a very diverse uh, organization where we recognize that there are just so many different types of family formats. Uh, and format maybe isn't the correct word there, but there's just so many different ways that a family can be put together, and it's not just traditionally, a, obviously, a man and a woman um, and a child. So um, that being said, of course, it is absolutely open to to various different types of communities uh, and. And one that um, we are always learning to find better ways to, to provide knowledge specifically to, to what their needs are at that particular time. Um, and so uh, to, to kind of go back on, on your question regarding that knowledge, um, forgive me, I, I, I'm, I think I lost your initial question that you had asked. The, uh, are you planning to open the community to the end users mm. so that they can share stories or experiences? So you're creating an actual community, not just a, event, uh, a provider to a uh, patient kind of a relationship. Yes. Is that yes. part of the plan as well? Yes, exactly. So when we look at what we'd like to do in terms of our strategy associated to the parents and the family accounts, it is really about lifting each other up. And if a mom is able to share her great experience about a pelvic floor physiotherapist, or a father would like to talk about the struggles of nighttime waking, um, that is something that we do currently um, with our support groups that they're able to share that story. Eventually, we also kind of foresee that once COVID kind of lifts a little bit, and people are able to do a little bit more in person um, gathering, um, they'll be able to have events that are associated to, to Treehouse and, you know, maybe regionally based, um, they would be able to communicate on various topics um, that are important to them. I think it's important that at the end of the day, it's not just about a place where you can find the care, but a place where you can nurture um, that future. That's great. You know, Hi. I'm a father of three and after every child, I never thought about this until now. Yeah. Like, you go through stuff too as a man. Of course. You have a child, especially your first child. Suddenly you realize, oh my gosh, I'm not responsible for another human being. It's, it's, it could be overwhelming, but you know, I don't, nobody ever talks about that. <laughs> Guys don't yes. openly talk about that, but we need a place to go and learn how to deal with the yeah, changes. Right? You know, Women have a term called postpartum blues. What about guys? Like we go through some stuff too. So I love this idea of making a uh, community like that accessible to everyone. Because well, we maybe you'll learn. become one of our dad, uh, of our, yeah, our dad and <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Like it's great. You're right. in the community of like, what's it like? How are you dealing with your baby being in NICU? And, uh, am I exactly. having these feelings? Is this normal? Like exactly. Yeah. Right. Or, no, or how? Well, or how can I support my partner better? Or you know, certain right. things like that. Your Very partner fun. starts, you know, sleeping with the in the baby's room, and suddenly you don't have your partner there anymore for a while. So you gotta, you know, gotta work through all that stuff. It's yeah. great to know that there's a community for this. We're coming up on time, yeah. uh, Carlos. You have some uh, thoughts about uh, yeah, the culture? yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Tulio. So, Julia, we're approaching final minutes of today's conversation. Sure. I wouldn't want to end it without asking you specifically about your company culture. The reason being is because we might have people out there who could be watching the show. Who could, as you grow and, and get the word out uh, all over the world, um, they might want to come work for you at some point. What would you say sure. to these folks who uh, express an interest in Treehouse that makes uh, your company uh, an awesome place to, to work at? Um, well, what I can say is that we are a fully remote company uh, and we intend on being fully remote. Uh, we have uh, employees across uh, uh, Canada that uh, work for us at the moment. Um, and we've actually had some interns from uh, all over the world. Actually, one individual was unfortunately stuck in India uh, because of the travel bans. But, um, you know, the fact that we were able to um, to to work um, remotely and to achieve still success remotely uh, showcases to me that that is most likely how we will we will move forward. Regarding our company culture, I think you know what I can say is that we are an incredibly open company. Um, I I'm a very open person. I'm very much there in the trenches every single day with my team, and I like to work alongside them. Um, we have a very open door policy about being very honest with each other uh, and just being there to empower each other and to help each other. Um, so that's something that we take very seriously. Uh, we are building software for a healthcare 
solution. And so at the end of the day, we need to be empathetic and we need to understand that uh, we're nurturing um, that industry. And so we have to do that within our company. So uh, we're very focused on, on just being open and transparent with each other and just being very honest about um, whether it's a difficult moment, whether it's a, a, a challenging moment, whether it's just one that we just don't want to deal with, uh, or it's a happy and, and successful moment. So uh, I encourage you to, to reach out. Great. Awesome. Thank, thank, you, thank you, you. Thank you, Julia. Thank you. Thank you for being with us. This is a case in point while we need a lot more women in STEM. So those of you watching, sitting on the fence, get in there and get involved in building a tech company because we need more women in STEM. Absolutely. Period, right? And you can do it. So, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank you yeah. for being with us today, Julia. We really appreciate you doing something of value and good for the public. We wish you a lot of success. We'll have to keep uh, tabs and on your on your growth. I know you've only been at, alive for about a month and a half, but <laughs> let's see how things play out in a, in a year. We're looking forward. We're very bullish about this platform. We're looking forward to seeing Good. you. Good, as we are. Stay too. with us. Thank Great. you so much. Stay with us just a few minutes as we go off the air for wrap up. Carlos, what do we got coming up? Uh, we have one more show tomorrow, right? That is correct, Julio. Tomorrow, the conversation will, we will, will be with Michael Wood the Chief Strategy Officer at Insighting Health. The topic will be the growing consumerization of healthcare. That'll be right here on Dojo Live, folks, at uh, 12 p.m. Pacific as usual. So please join us. Don't miss it. And remember, stay safe. And thank you, Julia. <laughs>